video, we're going to look at the 2019 FRQ number three. So it gives us a graph and it tells us that this is the graph of F and it's continuous defined on a closed interval, negative six to five. The figure above shows a portion of the graph of F consisting of two line segments and a quarter circle with a center at five comma three. That's probably gonna be important. It is known that the point three has the value three minus square root of five. So this value right here is going to be three comma three minus square root of five. All right, so part A, if the integral of negative six to five of f of x is seven, find the value of negative six to negative two. All righty then. So we know that the integral from negative six to five is seven and our goal here is to find the integral from negative six to negative two of f of x. All right, well, so the integral from negative six to five f of x can be broken up to negative six to negative two f of x plus the integral from negative two to five of f of x. My goal here is to get this piece. So I know that negative six to five is seven is equal to negative six to negative two f of x dx plus negative two to five f of x. And I can find this piece by looking at the graph. So from negative two to five. So what I wanna do is then find all of the pieces underneath the graph. So my goal is to find that highlighted region and there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it is by uh, doing symmetry. Um, so this piece right here is gonna cancel out with that piece because they're the same. This piece is gonna cancel out with that piece. And then I'm just gonna count the squares. So here's one. And then here's a triangle. And this triangle is going to be one half times two times one. So you get one. And in order to find that shaded area right there, I'm going to look at this square. And notice that the area of the square is nine because it's one, two, three by three. So it's nine minus the quarter circle that I'm taking out because I'm taking out this quarter circle. So pi, the radius is three squared. So it becomes nine minus nine pi over four. So that's this piece. This represents this blue region. So then when working it out, I get this is seven is equal to the integral negative six to negative two f of x plus two plus nine minus nine pi over four. So this is seven is equal to the integral negative six to negative two f of x plus 11 minus nine pi over four. Then I need to get the integral all by itself. So I subtract the 11 and I get negative four plus nine pi over four is equal to the integral negative six to negative two f of x dx. All right, part B. Evaluate the integral three to five, two f prime of x plus four dx. So part B says three to five, two f prime of x plus four dx. So we're gonna use our integral properties to kind of break this up a little bit. So we get this is two integral three to five, f prime of x dx plus the integral three to five of four dx. So this is two, and when you take the antiderivative of the derivative, you get the original back. So this is gonna be f of five minus f of three plus four times five minus three. And f of five is zero, and that's from using the graph, right? This is the graph of f. So f of five, is zero and f of three is three minus radical five. So this is two, zero minus three minus radical five 
plus 4 times 2. Negative 3 plus radical 5 plus 8. Negative 6 plus 2 radical 5 plus 8, which is going to give me 2 plus 2 radical 5. Part C says the function g is given by this integral right here. Find the absolute max of g. So we need to find g prime of x, set that equal to 0, <clears throat> on the interval of negative 2 to 5. So we're given that g of x is equal to the integral from negative 2 to x of f of t dt. So we take the derivative. And that's just going to be f of x, and we want to set that equal to 0. So f equals 0 when x is equal to, well, we're going to go up to the graph, it's equal to 0, it's equal to 0 here, here, and at 5. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get those values. It's equal to 0 at negative 1. 1 half and 5. So what I like to do is I make a sign chart. I put my endpoints on the end and my critical values or my zeros in the middle. So now I'm just going to pick some points like negative 1.5, 0, and 2. And I look at the graph and when I look at the graph I see that negative 1.5 is positive, this is negative, and this is positive which means my original graph is going to increase, decrease, and increase, which makes this a max and which makes this a max. So this is a max and this is a max. So I get a max either at t equals negative 1 or t equals 5. So we're going to find g of negative 1, which is the integral from negative 2 to negative 1 of f of t dt. And then to find 5, it's going to be g of 5, which is the integral from negative 2 to 5 of f of t dt. Okay, so let's go up and find the integral from negative 2 to 1 or negative 2 to 5. So negative 2 to 1, no, sorry, negative 2 to negative 1 is going to be this triangle here, which is going to be 1 half. And then negative 2 to 5 we got earlier as 11, pi, 11 minus 9 pi over 4, right? That came from right here. So this is 1 half, and this is 11 minus 9 pi over 4. So we have to do a little bit of approximating. So I'm going to let pi be about 3. So I get 11 minus 27 over 4 which is going to be 11 minus, this is about 8, so this is going to be 8, and this is going to be 3, about, right, I'm just estimating, but definitely, definitely bigger than 1 half. So you have a max value is g of 5 is equal to 11 minus 9 pi over 4, since there's a relative max at t equals negative 1 and 5, and g of 5 is greater than g of negative 1. Okay, part D, find the limit of that crazy thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to find the limit as x approaches 1 of 10 to the x minus 3 f prime of all divided by f of x minus arctan of x. So we go ahead, we plug in 1. So you get 10 minus 3. 3 times f prime of 1 over f of 1 minus tangent inverse of 1, which is going to give me 10 minus 3. f prime of 1 represents the slope when x equals 1. So right here, m is equal to 2. So this is 2 f of 1 is 1 minus pi over 4, and we get 10 minus 6 over 1 minus pi over 4, which gives me 4 over 1 minus pi over 4. 
which is good enough, but if you want to keep simplifying, you can by finding common denominators and then multiplying by the reciprocal. 